the Canadian Bitcoiners podcast is just two guys and maybe a guest or two discussing Bitcoin, Bitcoin equities, and the related macroeconomic space. It's not meant to be financial advice. So please, if you're doing any investing after listening to our program, do your own research, do your own due diligence, and understand that any money you invest can be lost. The show is meant for entertainment purposes only, and we hope you enjoy the program. Friends and enemies, welcome back to the CBP, Canadian Bitcoiners podcast. Happy Carbon Rebate Day. My name is Joey. That's my co-host, Len, partner in crime. What's going on over there, buddy? How the heck are you? Did you get your rebate? You said you didn't get it. We're both talking before the show. No rebates in either of our bank accounts, as far as we know. I got a haircut, and it's very short, this hair. And thank thank you to my lovely wife for doing this, because I refuse to pay anybody to do it. I get it for free. I don't care how good or bad it looks. In the end, it's I'm looking out of my eyes. I don't care what anybody's looking at me. It doesn't matter. End. You're married anyway. Like you could experiment with your hair. What do you care? It doesn't matter. <laughs> Where's she get, trying to leave you? I don't think anyway. Fuck. <laughs> yeah, remember that last year this time it was shaved, and this is close to it. But man, it was shaved, and uh, yeah, yeah. I remember how cold it was at that time. Yeah, not today. I felt every like breeze, even like uh, above me. I have a, a register. I was feeling that, and I had to wear a hat. I remember. I, I remember. Yeah, yeah. I still have the hat. So if I it's, have to put uh, it on. It's beautiful today. Did you golf this week at all? Are you planning yeah. on golfing this week? You must be. I, I plan on uh, playing Friday. The last yeah. Friday we got rained out, and this Friday we looks pretty good. So yeah, uh, we have so many coupons, Joey. <sighs> we have to play every week for the next three months before we, we have to. We have to play every week. We have to do it. Have to do it. <laughs> How about you? you? You play ball, right? You play football on a weekend? Uh, yeah, I, I had two games. We lost one, um, which is fine. And then uh, our other team, the real, the flagship team, beat a team of uh, 21, 20-year-old guys. That's, that was probably one of my proudest moments, uh, beating a bunch of kids who are like, you know, playing, a few of them play CIS. Uh, hmm. It's a good team. It's a good team. And uh, age is just a number, buddy. As long as you drink enough water and go to bed early enough, you can you can get it done for an hour. What's that saying? You may not be as good as you once were, but you're as good once as you ever were, right? That's how it felt on Saturday night. Gordy Howe played until he was 51, and he still was close to a point-per-game player at that age. He was gray-haired, but still he was uh, tough as nails, and anybody that came near him or his sons was going to feel the pain because he played with his sons too. <laughs> Love it uh, on the same line, nonetheless. Too. I love it. The LeBron James method, eh? He's waiting to play with his kid next year. Hopefully, anyway. Two kids kid he played with. Two That's nuts. Them. That's nuts. <laughs> I can't believe that. Um, get some housekeeping here. Maybe we could start with that first, though. The sponsors, uh, Easy DNS, best place, guys, for you to do all your website hosting, your registrar needs. Mark can take care of all of it. He's doing our website where you can read the uh, week that was in the CBP uh, as far as the research roundup and uh, the week that's coming as far as uh, Lens updates for show topics and all that other good stuff, all on CanadianBitcoders.com. Elsewhere on EasyDNS, VPS, virtual private server stuff. So if you want to do a BTC pay server, Noster Relay, uh, you want to do a Bitcoin node, you got some kind of store, you want to sell stuff, I see Hodler's official in the chat. I don't know why you're not using Mark. Uh, if you aren't, but you should be. And uh, you know we've, we've really benefited a lot from his services and he's opened our eyes to a lot of things that we were doing wrong and things we could do better. And uh, I encourage you to check out our website. And of course, uh, if you want to head over to EasyDNS and start doing whatever it is you're looking at uh, firing up, Mark will help you. Use the code CBP Media. Is that the code? I forget now. But uh, CBP Media is indeed the code. CBP Media. Or just tell him we sent you or just message him in the chat uh, or go up to him on the street if you see him. Whatever. He's always willing to help. Uh, <laughs> I think I said last week, somebody messaged me, uh, a viewer of the show messaged me and said they were trying to fire up... Uh, a domain name and they're having a little trouble. Mark jumped into action right away. The man himself, like truly the bat signal style uh, response to any trouble with uh, easy DNS. So you can't beat it, man. Head over there and uh, whatever it is you're thinking about doing, never a better time to start than right now. Who else we got? Bull Bitcoin. Let's talk about Bull Bitcoin because there's some news on that front. Before I talk about that news, let's look at the offering which they provide people, their customers, you and I, Joey, and our listeners and viewers. Yes, sir. You can buy your Bitcoin. You can sell your Bitcoin with Bull Bitcoin. You have those two options. On chain, fees are going up. So what do they give you? You got the ability to buy and sell with Lightning. Think about that, folks. Lightning is super cheap when you transact in, and they give you that option that you could start using. Because, well, we'll talk about what's going to happen with the fees later on in today's show. But well, Bitcoin, they give you so many different options. Also with that, you could pay your bills with Bitcoin. So if you have some Bitcoin, 
you made some massive gains and you want to start using that to pay some of your bills well bitcoin will facilitate that so if you have to pay your hydro bill you have to pay your car payment whatever the heck you got to pay you could use bull bitcoin to pay your bills with your bitcoin you would also buy gift cards through bull bitcoin with your bitcoin and by with that you are then indirectly spending your bitcoin in the real world living on the bitcoin standard just the way satoshi wanted you to do and the thing that they have still to this day, today was supposed to be the last day, but it's been temporarily postponed because of Canada Post and some technical glitches. I believe it's supposed to end in sometime in May. I don't know the, the exact date, but KYC free buys. Go to Canada Post, load up your accounts over there with Canadian dollars. And well, with that, you could buy Canadian, sorry, you could buy Bitcoin KYC free. So this was supposed to come to an end today, April 15th, but some due to technical issues with Canada Post. This has been delayed until at least sometime in May. Shoot, I wish I had the date handy, but I don't know have it specifically. I don't have the specific date. Anyways, use our promo code below if you haven't already signed up. If you do that, 21 bucks is going to be added to your account once you fund it and provide it necessary information. I want Bitcoin.ca. It's a place to go. Uh, so, <laughs> housekeeping. Uh, tomorrow, Plate Licking Pleb will be here in studio around 5 p.m. for a rip with yours truly. We'll be talking conference. We'll be talking, uh, I don't know, whatever else. Probably some fitness talk too since uh, he's on he's on a tear when it comes to uh, his personal fitness over the last year or so. And whatever else, um, whatever else we discuss, I'm sure it'll be worth your time. So stop in, listen over dinner, ignore your wife while you're eating your steak and uh, listen to Plate and I instead. And then Wednesday, we have... I want to say Taurus, uh, cool. Sunnyside Digital, right? Yeah. Yeah. So they're based, at least their office is based out of Toronto, Ontario, Canada. And they're helping businesses <laughs> with hardware solutions for setting up their mining operations, data centers, that, all that stuff. So it's kind of in line with what I've been talking with, about for the past little while. And look forward to chatting with him about this and uh, learning about Sunnyside Digital and what it is that they offer. Because this is something, if they're providing equipment to large data centers, I want to learn about this. And hopefully you'll learn something too. Yes, yes. Uh, next week, Len, um, Tom Karadza coming to the studio with his son, Aiden. We're going to be oh. doing a uh, multi-generational uh, podcast rip. I've, I've heard Aiden you know, start cutting his teeth on the Your Life, Your Term show once or twice over the years. So I'm looking forward to talking to the two of them and hearing uh, what they think. And also maybe telling Aiden that I need a guy for my Wednesday night football league. I don't know. He's pretty tall. I wonder if he's athletic. We got to find out. I got the football yeah. here in studio. We'll just play catch in the park or something before the show or after the show. You got to, you got to show all the dynamics of the game. It's simply just throwing a football and catching it. It's just one aspect. Not I take care of most of it. it. I, I'll take care of most of it. I just I need a guy who can run and get open. That's what I need. You, you, need, right. open. you need somebody with speed, quickness, yeah. stamina, yeah. and the ability to, to follow instructions. So there's a lot of different things you got to do. And I guess there's some mental toughness as well, right? Like, is it tackle or is it? It's a, touch. I mean, you get you do get hit. I got hit pretty good on the weekend. <laughs> so, Did somebody break a, a bone? Not to like you were mentioning to me. That oh yeah, I mean that happens pretty frequently. There's a guy on my team. This is a little off the beaten path. There's a guy on my guy team. I used who, to work. We well, you work with, and I used to work with him. Right? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. Uh, some broken hurt. bones there. Uh, I've I've been hit a couple times below the knees. Like I missed a game earlier this year because a guy rolled into me while I was throwing. Uh, I've seen a guy lose teeth a couple times. I have a buddy actually who a few years ago in a collision had one of his front tooth, one of his front teeth, I should say, stuck. In another guy's forehead, <laughs> just absolutely brutal. So yeah, um, but it is touch on paper, touch as far as, far as insurance goes. So anyway, yeah, we'll find out. It's going to be a big week, man. Big week for us. Big week for CBP. Big week for Bitcoin too. Obviously, we'll talk about the having a little bit tonight. I'm sure. We're, you know, with all that said, uh, Boost got any? Yeah, uh, let's do the Boost. That's a good idea. So Goose, Goose, <laughs> Boosts, 100 sats, Goose. 100 sats but he says nothing he writes nothing so he just puts <laughs> the mo btc dick replies that i says don't be shy goose so i'm gonna give mo <laughs> BTC the, so goose i mean write something i'll be happy to read it man that's so great thank you for the booze Love it. gordon 313 stats he writes in the last 15 minutes when bob was talking about asics are more than just bitcoin got me thinking how i need to explore how random verifiable generated numbers can help the common person so i'm yeah, uh, I know that he was talking about. I'm not sure if you listened to that part, Joey, where he's just going to be doing some something to do with randomly generated numbers and using ASICs to in order to do that. I didn't get all the way through it, but I mean, he, I like at least that he's not talking about stuff like you know, 
a lot of these other miners talking about nonsense, honestly, with the ASICs they have because they're so in over their head. But anyway, Bob, Bob is really sharp. It would not surprise me if he found other uses for his ASICs. That's for sure. And he said he'll come on anytime. So if you want to chat with him about... He's, he's the... been incredible. Like We didn't give him enough DAP really because we had a, a scheduling hiccup, I think, last week. I, remember, I can't remember exactly what it was. But the guy comes on for two hours on basically no notice. And yeah. he's just full of juice, man. He's all yeah. gas, no brakes. You can't, you can't get that anywhere. He's a he's an absolute gem, and I'm thankful that he's uh, friendly with our show because, like I said, anytime he wants to come on and just chat anything, you know, even if he wants to talk Milwaukee Brewers baseball, Green Bay Packers football, <laughs> I'll, I'll sit there and listen and, and try to chat. But anyways, yeah, yeah. Doug and Roop, 1,000 sats, writes in, love feeling like I was part of the live show, even though I caught a bit of it. Don't tell the fam. But that was the high point of my holiday. <laughs> Incredible. I'm, I'm glad you enjoyed it, Doug. It, it's it's always good. The chat is always buzzing on YouTube, which is great. And, uh, you know, we said this before, but one of the best things about the show is that there's this little like Petri dish of people who don't know each other, except for that they listen to us on Mondays and Wednesdays. And in the chat every week, it's the same people asking each other how they are, how things are going. They're always welcoming to new people. You can't beat it. You can't beat it. So I'm glad you came and I hope you can uh, make it again sometime soon. The Bitcoin Viking, 1000 sats. Now I kind of want a CBP underwater basket weaving certificate for my wall <laughs> in the office. We got to print those. We got to sell those, Joey. Official CBP oh, shoes, underwater man. basket weaving certificates. They have no um, no real world value. So. Uh, I would I would love to do that. My wife has her hands full with work, but we there's a few things in the like works here in the creative studios. One is uh, a gold machine gun index suit or suit. Suit, <laughs> I love that. We don't have a velvet a suit. A gold machine gun index shirt, and uh, the other I, I would do the underwater basket weaving thing if you wanted. Just print print a few certificates or just send them out. People with the biggest boost every week will just send you. Uh, <laughs> or something I don't that's know. a good idea <laughs> yeah we can do that we'll figure it out bitcoin plus food 2500 sats he was the big chief this time around have all my sats hallelujah at last ubi works give me a basic income so i could live as simple human being and release <laughs> my creative potential joey i'm not sure how much feedback you got from that last interview you had, uh, with floyd marinescu I think marinescu that. yeah did you listen to it we don't, i know we yeah. don't listen to each other's you listen to it what did you think i think um you pushed back a little bit i wish you pushed back a little harder but i understand why you didn't but some of what he said um i, I just wanted to go through the speaker and just yeah I, it, it doesn't I tell you. yeah okay i i I agree with what you're saying. There's sometimes, sometimes I think that uh, when we have guests and we, we, we talked about this like two years ago um, when the show started to get a little traction, people were mad. We were pushing back. I'm not going to argue with people on the show. I, I think that Floyd and I disagree on some things. I told him that before the interview, I told him during the interview and I told him after as well, but I got to say there's, there's some people who have, and I said this during the show too, but for those who didn't hear, there's some people who have ideas about how things should be and how they should work and no skin in the game. They have no skin in the game. They've not planned anything. They've not proposed anything, but they are the loudest. They are the screechiest voices in the room all the time. You know exactly who they are. Oftentimes it's like politicians or, you know, business people who just don't, they don't, they're not going to be affected by the things that they're proposing. Floyd is not like that at all. He is going to be directly affected by the things he is proposing. And I appreciate that about him. And that's one of the reasons I want to have him on. The other reason I want to have him on is because I think he's honestly, then I think he's onto something with the value tax. I don't know about the UBI thing, but I think he's onto something with the value tax. You're shaking your head. What, what do you think? Well, let's just run through this. What If there was a uh, land value tax that would be instituted, and I was assumed that it'd be a phased in approach. You wouldn't reach maximum taxation within you know year one. That's what I'm assuming. I'm trying to be realistic here. But even if you do a phased in approach, let's just play it out. What do you think is going to happen with the value of land and homes? Yeah, you it'll, think it'll that, start to decrease a bit. Okay. Now, if yeah. that happens... Let's look at how much of the Canadian economy is reliant on the real estate sector. In some provinces, it's somewhere as high as 20%. Yeah. Now, you're basically telling those 20% that's contributing a, a great deal to the those provinces and to the, the nation as a whole, it's going to be scaled back. So all the people that are in it, impacted with it, they're now probably going to be on the UBI because you know the majority of them 
some of them will, will have transferable skills to go to a different industry. But now you're basically increasing the amount of people that are going to be on either GBI and UBI. And you're going to try to have those people that are now newly added to the group of people that are to have nots to try to have it all fed with taxation or mostly fed through taxation yeah, of real yeah. estate. Now, yeah. if you're going to go through this whole rim girl to modernize the economy, because let's be honest, by doing this, this is a, a radical way of finding new taxation dollars. If you're going to do this, why not just, you know, you're going to torpedo it. Okay, let's torpedo it, but let's go with the hard money. Let's use gold or Bitcoin to back yeah. it up. So if you're going to do it, let's not do it half ass. Let's do it with our whole ass and do it the right way. I think but, you have a point there. Yep. And if I have to say one, one more thing, if there's, if you're ever going to do something, this is low hanging fruit. I don't believe this is what should be done, but this is something that could be done. I think this is the easiest way to get taxation dollars from land is taxing primary residence. The same you do with you tax rental. Yeah. Property, put put cash gains reason. on it. Yeah. So, I don't agree with that, but I think that's probably the, the more likely and the least impactful compared to what he's suggesting. Suggesting it won't generate the same amount of tax dollars, yeah. But certainly, it would have a impact on the real estate sector. Probably not as severe, but you will be able to generate a whole bunch of new tax dollars as a result. That's my yeah. Opinion. I think I think he. Like I, I, it's not that I don't agree with you. I think I do agree. But the the thing is, like the the approach that he wants to take is property taxes eliminated, income taxes eliminated. And you just pay on land value for a while. Now, the thing that you mentioned there is one that I didn't bring up, but it's funny. My dad was here shortly after the interview. Uh, he stopped by just to see what we were up to, my wife and I. And uh, we, he, we were talking about it. And you know, he, he mentioned some of the same things. But I will say that one of the things I still don't agree with Floyd on, and you mentioned this too, right? Why go half-ass and not just whole-ass? Ultimately, boomers are doing what any rational person, I think, would do. And it's they have to be in an asset that's going to protect them from the debasing currency and the currency debasement's not going to stop. I mean, we, we were chatting before the show and I was saying that I was reading some of these bank uh, economic forecast budget preview letters The the spending is going to continue until morale improves. And, and there's no, there's not going to be any attempt to regulate uh, the, the demand side of any of these bubble markets in Canada, whether it's the, you know, oligopolies and you know, the, these sorts of things they get away with there or real estate or whatever. Uh, there's not going to be any any room for discussion about demand. It's all or supply, I should say. No demand. It's it's all it's you know they're not going to they're not going to temper these things. The the point I think that Floyd makes that's strong. If even if I disagree with some of the you know details, we have to get away from the GDP revolving around us selling houses to each other. We have we have to. And it's it's becoming more and more clear that we have to do it. The longer we wait, the more painful it's going to be. Now, the question for you and me ultimately is like, how much pain do you want to you know uh, subject yourself to? I wouldn't mind seeing a, a, a rollout of this the way he described it, where like I said, you'd basically eliminate property, you'd eliminate property tax, eliminate income tax, just pay your land value tax. If you're a boomer, you can uh, delay the payment until you sell your house, so you don't feel that pain, and uh, it it does force turnover. I think ultimately the other thing that he doesn't get right and it's not for lack of not for lack of understanding the problem i think he doesn't understand the problem but he's i don't think he's looking at it the right way is land value when he talks about how you know land land value that's accrued is accrued outside of any work done to proliferate that land value right to, to increase the value of the land the house i own for example goes up in value twenty thousand dollars a year what did i do the land went up in value i would argue that's actually not the case i would argue that the people who live in the area do something oftentimes by doing nothing to increase the value of property. There's no crime. There's no problems. There's no, you know, there's a sense of community here. The longer people stay, the more stable the neighborhood becomes, the more value the land has because there's people who are well to do and stuff like that. I would argue that that accrual is based on human action. Uh, even if the action is taking no action. And I, I, I just, I think that there's something to that. And I would argue as well that, at the end of the day, the the more sort of prescient thing to do and the thing that would cause less pain but still produce a similar outcome in terms of affordability, don't like like we have to talk about the spending side. Stop spending money on dumb shit, you know, at the, at the sort of uh, three levels of government and start spending it on services that bring people who need houses to communities. If I look at downtown Hamilton, there's tons of services there for new Canadians, for low income people, for people who are trying to buy their first home, get their first job, whatever. They can't live there. And so that causes a problem. 
start sending those services out to, I don't know, Grimsby, uh, to Waterdown, to whatever, right? These places that are a little more rural, a little less dense uh, in terms of population, and you fix some of these problems. Now, there's a discussion to be had, and I don't want to go on too long here. This is a discussion to be had about what you can and can't force newcomers to the country to do. I would say you can force them to do any goddamn thing you want if you want to come here. Uh, that's the rules. You know, we can do whatever you, whatever we want with you when you show up. You can't move to the GTA. You can't move to Hamilton. You can't move to Vancouver. And you can't move to the NCR. You have to move somewhere else, somewhere rural, somewhere where they need work, where there's going to be new services. And, it, you know, I think people who speak against that would say, well, you're putting the cart before the horse. What choice do we have? We've tried the other way. It doesn't work. And these are difficult conversations because you're ultimately, I think, you know, you're, you're othering a certain variety of people, but this is the nature of the game at this point. We have to be realistic about what's happening, why it's happening and who it's happening to. And uh, if we don't do that, then we're never going to have a conversation. But like I said, I'm happy that Floyd came on because I think it was a bit off the beaten path for him to do a show like that, where we are about hard realities and just facts on the ground. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that he, I think, you know, had some answers to some questions that were not expected, a little bit difficult. And uh, I think overall it was a good conversation, which is all I could really ask for, um, talking to somebody who I, I have some agreement with, but more disagreement. Joey, I think we've discussed long enough about <laughs> everything up until this point. We still have a Bitcoin show to talk about. And, you know, I think it's time. And there's this first story I want to talk about. I, I really want to hear your point of, on your point of view of this, because this is something I'll be honest. I don't really have a fucking opinion because it's a drama between Odell and sailor. And for people that are unaware, this is something has been dominating Bitcoin Twitter or X Twitter, whatever you want to call it these days. But the crux of this is that Odell wrote that one of the Bitcoin ETFs, the ones that the one that was recently approved, one of them just a few months ago in the U S they were considering to donate to open source projects. And well, sailor, as Odell says, intervened. And in the word wording of Odell, he says that Sailor would crush them. I'm not sure exactly what that means, but as a result of that threat, but apparently that ETF didn't decide to go ahead with those type of donations. But yeah. anyways, adding fuel to this rumor mill over here is Jack Dorsey piped in and threw out the name of ARC. Now, Kathy. I have no skin in the game. I have no idea what the hell is going on. And like I said, I don't even have a fucking opinion about this, but I'm pretty sure you do because I love to hear your <laughs> thoughts on this because you you listened and talked to Odell. So you have at least a connection with him. And yeah. you listened to TFTC for a number of years. Yeah, it's one of my favorite shows. So, yeah. yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts about this. I mean, is Odell right? Is he wrong? Is, is Sailor right? Is it, or neither of them right? I want to hear. I, I, haven't heard, I haven't heard Sailor's reasoning so i don't know someone pulled an episode of some podcast that he did three years ago about uh basically why he's in the ossify now camp i understand why he wants to ossify if that's his stance but i'm not convinced that it is at the moment in terms of you know should the etf providers be funding open source projects i don't know i mean len you and me talk on this show all the time about dark money coming in i'm sure tonight we'll talk about runes whatever rodimer's latest thing is and you know, one of the questions you're going to ask during that segment is who's paying for this stuff? Who's funding it? Why is there so much publicity? Stuff like that. I think if you if you really feel that way about stuff like runes or ordinals, you should feel that way about public funding for developers. Uh, the ETF guys have a vested interest in the, the status quo. They are, at the end of the day, I think, still defensive in nature and want stuff like ossification, where me and you may not agree with that, or, a lot, or other Bitcoiners may not agree with that this ossification now thing. And so I, I'm, I don't know what Sailor's point of view is. I, I find it difficult to believe that he is against funding open source projects. When, if I look back, uh, you know, several years ago, I think he committed like 250 K to some open source uh, project, maybe not development, but some other Bitcoin adjacent work. I, I think broadly Len, this probably doesn't matter, but I'm going to, Go. I didn't listen to TFTC last week. I should listen to it. I, I totally forgot about what was going on with this thing. But um, yeah, it dominated uh, Bitcoin. It did. Twitter, I know it was, it was for big a period for a few, of time. It was big for like a day, which is you know a year in internet time. And uh, I don't know. Like Odell, on the other hand, is saying, well, he, like every week he's asking people to fund open source developers, which I get. Uh, but he he must realize. 
I'm sure he realizes, and I'm sure he talked about this on TFTC without even listening. I'm sure he talked about it, that there is a balance to be struck between making sure developers have a, can have a career, you know, working on Bitcoin, which is what we want people protecting the network, protecting the, the asset and making sure they're not being influenced by big money. There's never been money like this in Bitcoin before. You know, you say what you want about Kathy Wood or Van Eck or, you know, Fidelity, whatever. These guys got firepower for days when it comes to what they can do with funding and whatnot. And they they have they have priorities, they have agendas, they have they have things that they want to put at the front of the line when it comes to development or ossification or whatever. You got to be careful. That's all. I, I don't know. I don't know how else to to wrap this up except to say that we we need to hear what Sailor says. And uh, I would expect that in the next couple of weeks he'll do another podcast. He's he's about due. It's been a few months since he did uh, a podcast appearance or a YouTube video or whatever. So let's hear what he says about it. If he's if he truly is anti open source development support, then let's hear why. Um, I, the other thing I was thinking, like you kind of need even if he is ossifying now, you kind of need developer support to to push that agenda forward too, right? Even if even if the support is basically a, a strong dev or a couple of devs saying, yeah, we don't want to add anything new to this, unintended consequences, blah, blah, blah. Look back at what happened with Taproot. Th- this is like the same, it's the same kind of campaign, whether you want to stay in place or continue moving the protocol in a certain direction. So I, I have a hard time seeing why he wouldn't want to support it anyway. So let's let's see exactly what the nature of his his argument is, and then decide. I, like, do you you don't care? I guess you said you don't have an opinion. I'm surprised. No, you, because you've been pretty strongly opposed to some of the stuff that's happened on Bitcoin in the last little while. That stuff has been the the, the result of uh, you know support from maybe shadow money, maybe not, maybe some regular standard money from people who we know and have talked about, and maybe even talked to. So I don't know. The chat's buzzing here. Um, well. It- Really, is a lot of this is so far outside my control. And the reason why I really don't have an opinion is because I am guilty of donating to developers that I've liked, be it Bitcoin core developers or even projects or that others. Are yeah, related. of course. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. I've done this. And I am, let's, I'm going to be perfectly honest here. I'm a fucking, in the grand scheme of things, I'm nothing. In terms of what I own and what I donate is fuck all. But mm-hmm. if I'm doing it, and it's not life changing what I'm donating, but it's a, a token of my appreciation of the work that they are doing or what they plan to be doing, just because of the ideas they have and what they're trying to develop and what it is they talked about to date. I'm sure other people with far more capital behind them, like Bitcoin, for instance, they're doing the same as I am and doing the same thing. Now, it's not to say that people are only funding things that are good for Bitcoin that I choose that are good for people are funding everything. And that's that's fine and dandy. Like, this is the reality of it. This is capitalism. You you like something, you buy it, you fund yes. it, you go from there. The, yes. the unfortunate thing with, with we're talking about capitalism today is the money, unfortunately, that is being used could potentially be just created out of thin air, not something that is generated through proof of work. So if it's created out of thin air, then it's easy to sway or at least attempt to sway how things are going to be developed. But me being a node runner gives me a little bit of power in terms of what I want to verify in terms of my own idea, what I think is Bitcoin. And if there's ever a change in focus, I mean, I could run whatever I want. I have that ability and I can just go my, my merry way. So I have, in my opinion, a heck of a lot of power and a lot of other people have that power too. We experienced this in 2017. We had big money, powerful players involved. And who won in the end in that war? It was the people that, it was the plebs. It was the people that had the ability to run the fucking software. And they kept it like that. They're still running, able to run the software with virtually, I don't say, with, with fairly modest specs. So I, I'm just going to leave it at that. I don't have, that's why I don't have much opinion. A lot of this is so far <laughs> outside my control. What happens, happens, but I'm going to control what I can do. I'll run a node and I'll make sure that I'm supporting the protocol I like. I'm, I'm talking to uh, all caps in the chat and... I, yeah, he's talking about how it's like Dorsey's camp versus Sailor's camp. Dorsey's open sats, Sailor is not. And Sailor's, the MSTR 
thing. Like they're a Bitcoin development company now, right? So maybe that's another moving piece here. I hadn't really considered because they haven't done anything. There's been no yet like results, right, from that camp. Yeah, but there will be uh, presumably. Presumably, we can yeah. we can expect that to be the case. It could just be vaporware too. It could just be always <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> the carrot being dangled in front of us is a turtle carrot. And hey, well, where is it? What is it? Uh, I, don't I don't know. I I think we got to wait and see where some of the chips fall here. But it's it's interesting that this quickly there's already basically a dispute between you know may, maybe the preeminent bitcoin maximalist and the preeminent fiat facing bitcoin guy right and this that says something to me and it's a, it's a it's an example of what we're seeing in a few other places maybe not as severe and not as publicly visible but uh they're they're starting to become uh they're starting to 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 show fault lines are starting to appear basically between a couple of different camps in bitcoin mm -hmm. on a couple of different fronts i'm sure we'll talk about a few of them tonight now, i think now is a good opportunity to just at least touch upon ruins and we discussed a little bit more i don't want to get too much into i the I, I thought for sure you were going to call them ruins just to, for the shits and giggles. That's but actually I, guess a not. Good, I, I can't believe I fucking missed it. But anyways, <laughs> ruins. Uh, anyways, they're built. This is what Casey Rodimer says. I, this is straight from his tweet. I'm not fucking pulling this shit out of my ass. He says that ruins were, were built for DGENs and meme coins, but the protocol is simple, efficient, and secure. So he's basically outlining this is for people that are just doing meme coins and fucking people just want to roll the dice. Mm -hmm. The reason why I'm bringing this up now is because. This stuff, Casey's the, the dude that was behind the whole inscription slash um, ordinals fiasco. And if anybody recalls, it, it drove up the price of, partially drove up the price of, of fees, BRC20 tokens too. Um, so in terms of ordinals and, and inscriptions, he's the guy that was, I would say, instrumental for at least spawning this to the world. And now this thing is going to be the same type of thing. And it goes live on the date of the halving. So the date of the halving is expected to be on April 20th, give or take a day or two. I'm not sure a day actually, probably not two. So this, if you look at the transaction fees right now, the minor fees, they've been steadily going up. I don't know if it's in uh, anticipation of this going live or anything, but I suspect if you have not consolidated your ET UTXOs, and I've been banging this drum for quite some time, it could be worse. It could be worse for a period of time. It, it, I don't think there's going to be a sustained, and forgive me if I'm wrong on this, this is not financial advice. I don't think there's going to be a sustained, you know, high three figures or even four figures sats per V-byte. Yeah, I mean, it, it may happen that it may be for a period of time, a brief period of time. Eventually, the fees come down. It takes some time, but fees do come down over time. But the only thing I would say, if you haven't yet done consolidation of your, your UTXOs, and if you think that right now the fees are manageable, you want to stomach it, my suggestion is at least look at the option of doing it now, do your own research, of course, because things get really dicey in the future. And if, if it does for how long, I don't know. But uh, even all caps is saying open some lightning channels, which makes sense because that gives you to, uh, the ability to transact in a relatively cheap environment after you open your channels. But... Man, this is going to be problematic, I think, for at least a few weeks right after the halving. And it will take some time, but we will get to a cheaper fee environment. But how long it will take? It could be a couple of months. I'm just looking at this Rodimore tweet. Um, yeah, man, I think this is like just, it's stupid. It is stupid. It, there's, not, there's no other way to describe it. It's for DGENs, and he says as much. These guys are are they're not using Bitcoin for uh, what you and I want it to be used for. They're within the rule set, fine. But to your point, Len, I think the thing for even the people who are like the most hyped on runes, like whatever this is, it's like shit coins, I guess, like these Solana tokens basically, but moving to Bitcoin. Some of the Solana tokens are hilarious, by the way. I can't repeat them on the air, but I definitely recommend checking them out. The the thing that uh, I think we can take some solace in is that you'll remember how just in your face popular uh like screechy the ordinals people were when they first took off right it was huge everyone was talking about ordinals and inscriptions this is going to be a nice big thing we're bringing people to bitcoin it's going to support fees blah 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 that was all horseshit it all died down you know over like the course of three months 
Then you get a little wa- a wave again, then it dies down again. Then you get a wave again, then it dies. It's I think that is broadly done. And I again, like the one of the things I'm curious about is how much is Casey making on this stuff? You know, is he is he he's certainly making a uh, change um, in the, in the rap lyric sense. He's making money. <laughs> I don't I'll know why I said follow- that. I know he's making money. He's making money on the on Hell Money podcast. I think because mm-hmm. they just had French Montana on. And no, so, no, like, no. If you have Is rappers, it- yeah, hang on. If you have if you have rappers doing your podcast talking about runes and inscriptions sh- and shit like that, like you you fall in the way from what you're supposed to be doing. I think as a Bitcoin dev, and again, this is coming from me. And I'm of the two of us. I'm the softer on whether or not inscriptions people should be allowed to walk the streets or or consume you know energy in their homes or whatever else right like you want i think you want them hanging but uh, me i don't really care <laughs> i just think this is dumb it's like he keeps he's 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 like onboarding or trying to onboard people who i view as just generally kind of stupid like how many times are you going to fall for this it's, it's another huge magazine. thing it's, it's another all i have to say i'm going to ask magazine. i'm going to ask dave and mark about it i have to because they're talking about it and I want to know, like, don't, do you guys not see the problem? Do you think there's a problem? Like, no, steal? well, let's they find do out. Not. We got to find out. I want no, to steal they, for they, me. They, and it's, you know what? Somebody could say something. It's the actions that truly matter. And sure. the actions that they are fucking doing right now is they have a marketplace for ordinals. They're actively trying to sell their own pictures of covers of the Bitcoin magazine. So yeah. these are actions that prove that they fucking believe in this stuff and they want to find a buyer of last see, resort. I'm, for the see, I'm not, their- see, I'm not sold on that. I think that explanation is too simple. I think, like I said Whoa. before, yeah, it's, I think, it's, like so- I said before, I think there's a lot of things they could do that would be way worse in terms of funding the operation. And they do that because it's the most palatable thing for the most Bitcoiners. Let's be honest. So let's be somebody honest. Somebody out there the, goes the, the, the number, and robs the fucking bank. Instead yeah. of murdering somebody, it could have been a lot worse. They could have fucking did a far worse crime. <laughs> but you know what? You did a fucking crime that impacted people. You're a fucking loser. That's true. But the ordinals aren't a crime. And I think you know, that there's, you know, I think that there's like a very, criminal in the eyes of yeah. this Bitcoiner. It's a very small number of Bitcoiners that care. That's another thing, right? It's another thing we have to admit. And I'm not saying that it's worse or better or whatever. I think a lot of people should care. And it shows that Bitcoin is not matured to the point where people who are invested in the network's success are looking at things and forming opinions based on relevant information a lot of the time, unfortunately. But to me, again, like we're not going to agree on this tonight, but I, I do, I do think we agree on one thing that Casey is just like, go, he's going for the lowest common denominator again here. Right. And this time he's just not even trying to hide it with the ordinals thing. He was at least saying, Oh, it's going to support fees. It's going to, you know, increase network security. What, but, but like it, now he's saying the quiet part out loud is for DGENs and gamblers. And uh, he's going to for sure have a token that he dumps on everybody if he hasn't already. Good luck, man. Enjoy. But, um, you know, you're going to wind up with less Bitcoin. In a lot of cases, if you play these stupid games, what do you win? Stupid prizes. So good luck. Have fun. But I, I wouldn't be doing anything with this stuff. I, nor will I. It, I. I think the and only... By the way, and by the way, you're, there's going to be people in your life who are like, oh, man, I made tons of money on this stuff. You should, like, all the, almost all those people are going to be lying. They've spent tons of time. They invested tons of their own resources. They're not telling you about the shit they got dumped on. Uh, they're not telling you about the losses. Mm-hmm. You, you make it this what you will, okay? We talked about this before, I think, Glenn. It's like, the, it's like the guy who spends every weekend at the casino and every weekend he wins. Like, buddy, nobody believes that. It is is just pure insanity that you keep saying this. Uh, there may be the like, 1% of 1% that may be doing this. There, yeah. there, I'll give the odds that there is possibly one diamond in the rough that could actually do this but the reality is the more most of the people are just losers long term long term like you know you got your reputation to think about you got your sanity you got i don't know i mean maybe i'm the crazy one but i just don't care like i just don't i don't give a shit honestly about this stuff it's like it's just on the peripheral to me it's gonna fade away like every other fad and then if they come if it comes to something again we'll talk about it again and i'll have the same opinion that he somehow managed to find even a lower IQ rung to target uh, in the Bitcoin space. I, I, the other thing too, I'd be curious to hear your thoughts. Is it Bitcoiners really jumping on this stuff, or are people coming over from other chains to to grab these tokens and start BRC twenties and do all this shit? Well, why not? I mean, we could look at. There's a, a funny Solana story that I wanted to bring up, for instance, where this dude, and I'll I'll just talk about this quick, and we'll I'll go back to your question. Sure. He was 
upset because he's in Solana, he has this meme token and 45, sorry, $54,000 worth, 54K USD, by the way. And because of congestion, it's not allowing him to sell. He's been trying for some time to get rid of it, <laughs> but it's because of issues with Solana. He's not able to do it. Now, slow Anna doesn't work. Slow Anna. Now, <laughs> something like that. And a lot of people listening to this is going to, or looking at that, say, you know what? I could work on this on Bitcoin. That network has been 10 years since there's been any outage. Yeah, I'll do it over there. And then that doesn't matter if I spam that network. Who gives a shit about everybody else? But yeah, it's going to drag in people that are quote unquote not Bitcoiners. Now, anybody could buy in Bitcoin or not. It's just the usage of it and the way it's being used like that. You know, I'm a node runner. I don't want to have that garbage on my node. That's why I mm-hmm. fucking run a filter on a filter. That's why I, I edited the Bitcoin.com to get that shit out of the mempool of my node. So, you know, I have some skin in the game with respect to what I'm doing with my node and how that's being redistributed through the network, the Bitcoin network. So, yeah, it's it's going to bring in these people for better or for worse. And as a result, it's going to make fees much higher if they continually span the network. But the only mm. good thing about all this, there is one silver lining. It gives us an opportunity to figure out what happens in a high fee environment because without this we wouldn't have had these very high fees and maybe there may not be development on things that help during high fee environments not to say that everything that they're developed being developed right now is good but it's opening up people's eyes and maybe they're funding things that are deep to be decent like lightning for instance and i know lightning has capabilities Sorry, it has limitations with its capabilities. It's not scalable, given right now. I know channel factories could potentially make it scalable, but I just we need stuff like that. Not, you know, not the shit that's going to be like side chains and shit. Like we, we need stuff that's actually Bitcoin. It gives people the ability to fucking transact with it cheaply and still have to manage your own Bitcoin. And I guess with this high fee environment, it's going to give people an opportunity to look at options, build upon them, and maybe fund some of these things. Let's accelerate that thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm with you there. That's a good silver lining. We talked about that before. I think that's true. I, I, I don't know, man. <clears throat> the other part of me is like, are these people who are playing around with these tokens ever going to be Bitcoiners anyway? Like, probably not. This is, that was the other thing Rodimer was saying. Like, we're going to get people into Bitcoin via the sound money, or sorry, via the uh, shitcoin stuff, and then they're going to be addicted to sound money. Like, I doubt it. <laughs> the guys who are trading. Greta's milkers token on Solana are not coming over to Bitcoin for Austrian principles, you know, like they're not going to go read Mises <laughs> after trading, after trading, uh, you know, Geo Bowden or whatever. It's just not going to happen. These people are not, <laughs> they're not like us, you know, I, I like the do it. Elizabeth Warren one. I'm not going to say what it is, but <laughs> she's my favorite. I, I like her. You know what? Just the, do you think she's going to be around in terms of uh, elected official in say two terms? She's no. in her, mid 70s right now so she's gonna run for this one for sure yeah and if she, she could wins, i mean we just what about Fe- like she's gonna go feinstein i don't think Maybe? so like literally die in office <laughs> that's so, so fucking weird like, i personally think I she, she like she understands that there's more to life than being a politician and you know when it comes a point in time and what somebody's life they look in the mirror and say it's just not worth it, it can you finally embrace life. your true calling it's whatever it is. i mean the, slurping know, at the the heels of big banks Hey man, I, she could do what she wants. She is a lawyer by trade, I believe. Yeah. yeah. So you know, I, whatever. All the more power to her. She'll be, she'll do great on speaking engagements because you know, given her her pedigree, um, what she's done in politics, and she's ran for president, right? Uh, she she's did. tried to become. Yeah. She can finally uh, take private jets without hiding behind her more portly staff members uh, <laughs> upon yeah. her upon her departure. Yeah. Uh, I like Liz Warren. Let's talk about something I think you've been waiting for, Joey. This is some interesting information. I don't know if you mentioned it last week or two weeks ago on the show, but it's something you said recently because the information uh, that's being reported right now that we're getting from publicly traded companies that have been buying up the or one of the Bitcoin. Yeah, yeah. 13 Fs are being filed. Uh, they have to be filed before the end of Q2. So I wrote that in the newsletter maybe two weeks ago. You're right. And so on Twitter, I read those newsletters, by the way, Joey, it's uh, <laughs> being reported that several U.S. banks and not the big ones that you and I know by name, but they have been buying up IBIT, GBTC, too, mm-hmm. and other types of Bitcoin ETFs. And the value of these buys, they're in the range of several hundred thousand dollars each. So nobody is aping in, but they are putting a decent chunk of change into these ETFs individually and collectively as well. 
And it's ironic they're doing this because considering that these banks are the ones that are most likely to fail now that the BTFP program has ended. So I'm wondering if they're just, just basically a last ditch effort to keep everything afloat, you know, hope for Bitcoin pump to happen and then sell the ETF and well, use that capital just to keep things running. It's, I just find it interesting that a industry, a company that is so highly associated with fiat, in this case, a commercial bank or any bank, sorry, in the United States, they're buying up Bitcoin, at least the ETF. Um, I don't know. I, I know you were talking about this. You wrote about it. Uh, so I want to hear your thoughts about it. I'm pretty sure you have lots of an interesting opinion on it. So surprisingly, I don't. And the only ah. reason I the only reason I don't is because I I don't think that these that the banks buying it. To, to me, until you hear on a quarterly earnings call or something, why you're really just speculating. It's a, it's, it'd be crazy if one of these regional banks is like, yeah, we need this as insurance. Like that would be significant. Uh, but I don't think that's the case. I think that I, I want to see like a major company corporation, uh, or one of the sort of named banks in the States buy this stuff at a pretty solid clip before I celebrate the 13 F filings. But I do think that's the signal and that that, that, that kind of does cut through a lot of the noise about, you know, these FinTwit accounts talking about Ugh, Bitcoin down on, on a word that the world is ending, even though it's insurance against the world ending. Like, you know, the, the, the Bitcoin spot price is the only thing trading Sunday afternoon. So, you know, unless you're in oil, gold or Bitcoin, everything else is closed basically. And that's where you're going to see risk expressed, even if it doesn't necessarily reflect the nature of the asset. That's just the way things are in Bitcoin. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to deal with that for the rest of its existence. As far as these other 13Fs, I mean, there's a number of them coming out over the next quarter. The thing to note is that now the the starting gun has gone off. I think um, in the newsletter I noted that I think it was Macroscope who tweeted this out. But you know, the the one sort of speed bump to all this is who's going to go first? Who's going to be the first to announce? And so we've seen now a couple of banks, a few other filers come out and say, here's what we got. We bought 100,000 shares, blah, 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 whatever. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing who else announces more than anything else, because I, I think there's more people thinking about this than before. And don't forget, Len, one of the reasons banks might be buying is because, as we mentioned here in Canada, Fidelity, for example, talking about adding big spot Bitcoin ETFs to some of their conservative um Basically, like ETF uh, vehicles, ETPs. I, I would be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised if that's why some banks are buying too. They need to have it as part of their exposure um, profile for some of the products they offer in house. It's good. Still, I think we've talked before about how these products are how you get the marginal Bitcoin buyer, someone who would never buy spot, has really no interest in Bitcoin or learning about Bitcoin, but wants a product from a bank they trust, and the bank they trust has a one percent allocation to IBIT or to GBTC or whatever. So it's good. I, th I think it's good. I think the ETFs have broadly been great for Bitcoin. The price now obviously pulling back a little bit, but it's hard to deny that um, seeing TD put out, I mean, this is from Ledin's team, Maurizio the DM me the tweet too. And I, I, I had a laugh about it. I'm like, it's crazy that t like two years ago, they were debanking companies like Ledin and now they're running ads about the halving. Two, like two or three years that uh, that changed. That's going to continue to to go our direction, and uh, I'm I'm psyched about this. I, I'm wondering, uh, Coinbase's uh, earnings call is like in three weeks, I think. So I wonder if they'll talk about it since they are the ETF holder. I wonder if they're going to talk a little bit about uh, who they think is buying or whatever. Can they talk about it? I'm not sure. Be curious though. That's going to be an interesting earnings call because it'll be the first one since they started their uh, ETF custody product. I'm curious though, why nobody's gone down the micro strategy path because it's too it's too career too much career risk that's all we, well, we talk what, about, i think that's really it. what's the difference i mean aside from i guess capital gains but what's the difference between buying some bitcoin or the equivalent value for the etf if you're doing it just for adding it to your balance sheet i mean it gives you a it's a different type of buy one you're relying on somebody else to managing and hold it and hold it and control it talk about dtf versus you where you could do it and you could manage the key so i would say inherently there's less risk if you were to buy spot yeah and just hold on to it if you understand how to it's not like you know we just, this is they not, just can't they just can't do it right like sb why? has talked about that they just can't it's not there's no legal framework for it it's, it's wait wait, wait. 
it's really there's no there's legal framework. MicroStrategy has been doing spot. it. Yeah, MicroStrategy is its own animal. There's it's it's basically Sailor and his cronies, right? Like that's. But this is a, a copy pasta thing because yeah. they are a publicly traded company that operates within the walled gardens of yeah. the SEC. Yeah, yeah. No, if they right. can you're do right. it. Anybody can do the exact same thing no, that they're see, doing. That's where I think you're wrong because you you have to you have to get your board on board and the boards of other significant treasury publicly traded companies are made up of people who are all defensive and conservative in their approach to the treasury because if the treasury suffers thanks to their decision making, it's their career that they're risking. If the treasury suffers after Sailor, you know, if 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 Sailor does it and the treasury suffers. You know, Sailor was a relative unknown before. He'll become a relative unknown after, and that's think, it, right? He returns to the right. dust from whence he came, and that's all there is to it for him. But if someone like, uh, you know, Ackman, for example, is on the board for a few publicly traded companies, if Ackman suddenly comes out and is like, hey, uh, we need to put Bitcoin on the balance sheet. We have to issue equity to do this. We're going to dilute no, no, all the no, shareholders see, and sell them on. I, I, I didn't frame this right. In terms of what they're purchasing, they're, in terms of ETF, why not just buy the equivalent of that um, so instead of aping in to fucking bitcoin you're just buying a little bit you're buying a little bit of utf no i'd rather ride this spot same deal yeah right it just gives you more control it gives you more I flexibility i don't think it's right? the same deal i think there's a i think there's a lot of legal cloud over spot and holding don't forget microstrategy doesn't custody either right coinbase custodies for them they so, do for them yeah yeah it so like, time to modernize things and to show that to the world how to, to properly do it somebody hey, i would i would cvp I'm just saying, I wouldn't hold your breath. I mean, our board is me and you, <laughs> so we don't have to make any decisions. We, we gotta that. go. We gotta go public. I think it's yeah, time sure, to go public sure. and show the <laughs> fucking world how this thing is done. You know, not what we're talking about. Let's talk about a company, Meta Planet. I think it's a it's a good segue to this. I'm not sure if you heard of these guys before, and I'll probably forget about them next week too, because uh, the, it's a Japanese company. They started off as a budget hotel operator, and now they've transitioned to a Web three company i'm not quite sure how this fucking transitions to that but hey it worked for them anyways for the time being they're the topic of discussion why because they have added some 6.5 million dollars of bitcoin to their balance sheet and it's interesting because when this news was announced their stock price within two or three days jumped 90 percent. and the only thing that they announced was they purchased some bitcoin and added their balance sheet it reminds me of neelam resources part two <laughs> Not sure if this is the same thing, but either way, they say that they're trying to minimize their exposure to the yen. And their timing of that was really good because if you look what happened to the yen in the past few trading days, hasn't been doing all that well. So in terms of the reaction of, of investors, investors seem to have loved this type of announcement. You know, it could be another Neelam resources pump and dump, but hopefully Meta, Meta Planet, they have the necessary resources to make sure this is not a pump and dump. I don't know what the fuck's going on over there, but investors <laughs> love it. But the fact that it's done like this, I'm wondering if other companies are going to follow suit, right? Like you have a company that simply just announces we're buying Bitcoin, 6.5 million is a decent amount. Stock price jumps 90%. Now, why can't other companies do that? And then also raise the same type of hoopla and then their valuation of their company goes up just because there's a, a lot of jazz surrounding that. Like, by the way, the CBP added some Bitcoin again this month. So if anybody wants to talk, yeah, we bought the the dip. We'll continually buy the dip or even fucking the highs. We don't give a shit. We'll just, but anyways, story for another time. But yeah, there you go. Like <laughs> investors, for whatever reason, love this type of news. This company jumped 90% in value. Why? Just because they bought Bitcoin. So maybe this is going to give reason for other companies to do the same thing. Man, I... I don't know anything about. I know nothing about this company. It sounds like you know nothing about them either. Like I don't know. I'll forget about, about them by them. next week, guarantee. I don't know anything about them at all? I, I just again, like I am. It harkens back to during the run up in like 2018, 17, 18. Companies like Polaroid or Kodak, whatever, becoming like blockchain companies. Long Island Ice Tea becoming Long Island Blockchain. Like these guys. I, I guess. I guess that adding Oracle. To the balance sheet. Oracle never did it though. They never. I did know. It. Do you remember that though? That I remember. That Larry Ellison was like our god for like three quarters worth of earnings calls in a row after Elon bought. We're like, oh my god, this is the day Oracle's going to buy. And this guy's probably in his house. Like, what is wrong with these guys? <laughs> What's going on on the internet here? Anyway, I I wish everyone the best in Meta World or whatever that Meta Planet man Meta Get Planet that whatever right. I'll forget the company is called. <laughs> don't I just, commit that to memory. I don't. I don't know what to make of all this. I mean, when I, 
<laughs> who's buying companies like Meta Planet based on you know six million in Bitcoin added to the treasury? I don't know. Not not me. Not you. I don't know who's doing it. But somebody who's is. buying meme coins. Who's fucking generating <laughs> these meme coins? I don't know. Oh my god! But you know what? I get it's the same type of investor, and it's I was kind of involved in those things. They're looking at it. Yeah, probably. Probably. I like Meta Planet Coin too. I'm gonna invest in that as well and fucking run with it. (laughs) We should have did that, by the way. Anyway, (laughs) I I just want to start. I want to run a stream of just like the most foul language Solana token tickers. Like some of them are just unbelievable, unbelievable how good they are. You will get (sighs) canceled immediately. Immediate strikes, cancellation. No, no, it's not just strikes. It's cancel culture will fucking get you. Oh, some job. of them. Some of them for yeah, sure. Yeah, they're, they're, they're absolutely they're brutal. I know. I know. Nasty stuff. So definitely something <laughs> you can't repeat in, in public or even in private settings too, depending on you talk. Your phone's to. listening to you for sure. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> so only, I only think about them. That's as, that's as far as I go. Uh, one more story, I think. Maybe sure. two. Anyways, so some interesting news about people that attended the 2022. Mm. core dev atlanta event and this is an event where luke dashier dash jr i don't know sure exactly how to pronounce his name anyways he attended that event and also attended with some guy named mike schmidt and it's not the greatest third baseman to ever played baseball no it's some bitcoiner maybe he's the same guy i don't even know but i don't think it was anyways the fbi uh wanted info about the people at the conference because you know, this happened shortly after Luke's stolen Bitcoin saga took place. Yeah. If you remember, he was storing it on his NES. And all this info, <laughs> it's, you know, they said they, the FBI was telling them, you can't disclose this information to the public, according to the FBI. But one year expired, so this guy, Schmidt, came out and revealed what he knows. Oh, Mike Schmidt is with Brink. So uh, the info with the FBI, they were seeking on attendees, their information, GitHub usernames, first and last names. That's the scary one. Email addresses. So I guess moving forward, a lot of people out there are going to probably use the pseudonym Pablo. That's the name I like to use. And there's probably going to be a spike of Pablos within the Bitcoin community. <laughs> so if you come up to me and you see me in public, remember I'm Pablo. And th- But this whole thing is really fishy too. Like there's something that's kind of, it doesn't smell right with me because with this whole Bitcoin, stolen Bitcoin fiasco, was it the PGPs were compromised or something? <laughs> can't remember the specifics, what happened to, to Luke. But either way, man, this is something else. It just, it's leaving a sour taste in my mouth. And I don't know what to make of this, but it's fucked up, man. And for anybody that's going to be attending conferences, you know, be very careful what information you put down. That's all I'm going to say. Yeah, same. I, I don't really have much to add except like, the conferences are a weird honeypot. And um, I say this, of course, in advance of having plate liquor on to talk about the, the Canadian conference. They are a bit of a honeypot because, you know, there's a lot of different places where you can get got during a conference. You're staying in a hotel or an Airbnb, you're driving in, you're renting a car, you have your, you know, conference data, your purchase data, all that stuff, right? You're going to the bars with all the people from the conference, you're wearing Bitcoin gear around. Like the OPSEC's not great. Let's just call it what it is. That's in the best case scenario. But then when you factor in that the, the feds might just come knocking and be like, give me the guest list and make sure you give me everyone's GitHub name too, because if you don't, you're going to jail for an und- you know, undetermined amount of time. How do, you, how do you fight that? What do you do? We, maybe the basement was the move, Len. You might have been ahead of your time here. We got uh-huh. to gotta reconsider our, our security model. I'm a trendsetter in so many ways people don't understand. <laughs> Velvet suits for everybody, 25-year-old cars for everybody. And Wearing shorts rallies. in the winter every day. Oh, my fuck, car I wear died, by the way. Man. My car's dead. It's dead. It's Son died. Bitch. I got mine I back. Oh, nice, nice. Yeah, it's, I'm very well, my happy. My car died and or your car So what happened to yours? Car. I'm curious. It, I was driving it to work on Friday afternoon, and uh, I got to the end of my street, and it died at a red light. And uh, just the RPMs went to zero. All the lights went on. I was lucky I was able to start it and turn it into a parking lot. Uh, I was like adjacent to a parking lot. And then yesterday I called the tow truck to get it to, to get the guy to drive, to drop back in my house, about 750 meters from my front door. And I got in the car, I started it. And I said to the guy, just follow me. I'm going to have to blow through every stop sign because if I stop, it's, it's going to, the car is going to seize up again. So I did, I blew through every stop sign. Um, and uh, the car made it to my driveway, but you, you should see the RPMs like just. You know what you have to invest in is what? one of those scanners. OBD. I know I, everyone. I says have this one. Yeah. In my, uh, you know, the pocket of my door. We used to it, mess around it, with it at work. I think it was yours that I 
put on my Volkswagen back in the day when I couldn't figure out why the engine light was on. And so I've actually become proficient with it. I could plug it in while driving because if I drop the hammer in my car for a significant amount of time, I get in an overboost situation and it, it throws a code. So the only way to clear it, then it goes into limp mode. The only way for me to clear it is I have to plug that in and clear. So I could do that ah. while driving. I could <laughs> I could actually plug it in, clear the code while driving, get the code gone. So yeah, that thing is handy and it saved me hundreds and hundreds of dollars. And it doesn't cost all that much. I got this years ago for maybe a hundred bucks from they're probably cheap higher. now they're probably yeah cheap now. yeah so it's definitely worth it to consider and <laughs> it's yeah get it and learn how to, to read and clear codes and then fuck it you get a code even if it's you know severe fuck it you know just clear it you know you're good to go so if it starts and goes it's all right sometimes that's all you gotta do is just clear it and we'll just keep on moving but at the very least you could diagnose what's the problem that's what that's out. what you want right and like i i whatever this would be good after show content but i'll just say it the place i brought the car to i won't name the place because i don't know if it was their fault or not oh i suspect it was i can't fill my gas tank now so they had to drop the tank to get at the fuel pump to replace it a few weeks ago mm-hmm. and i didn't put any gas in it for a couple of weeks for a couple of weeks i barely drive the car i went to put gas in last week can't fill it past like 60 percent will not take any more gas and so I'm, i said to my dad i'm like you ever seen this before he goes no and uh he took it up to his mechanic while it was still drivable and that mechanic uh, up on the mountain is like, is a is a hack job. Like these guys, there's oil all over the place. They didn't they didn't do they didn't really diagnose like any other problems. Like it needs a lot of work, right? That car needs like bushings and stuff. Like it's on its last legs, anyways. But if I had known that all that work needed to be done, I wouldn't have given these guys two thousand dollars to fuck up the car even more. And so now, you know, the pump they replaced clearly not working. The gas tank they put back, clearly not doing the right thing. It's clearly not reading properly with the nozzle at the pump. And uh, I got to call tomorrow. The guy called me today and left a message. Um, but I'm going to call him so tomorrow. So it's just, just like, the sensor showing it's not full. Like it, it may be physically full, but you're, it's uh, not full. You're, it's not full. It's not full. There's not enough money going in there. Oh, so okay. yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's not full. Bubble or something. Who knows? But the problem is that it wasn't doing that before. It is doing it now. And that the problem I took it there for is still happening. So what did you charge me for? Yeah. <laughs> like I'm just I'm out two thousand bucks on on labor and parts. And uh, anyway, doesn't matter. These are just these are first world problems. Don't they worry. are. You yeah, gotta get a car you can just piss in the tank. And I'm using I'm using my dad's right now, but I'm gonna buy like a I don't know some kind of twenty thousand dollar car or something like that. But um, we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, uh, stay it. here. We'll transition to the next. yeah. Stay here if you're on uh, audio or video, I should say. And if you're not, then just hang on. Till tomorrow for the audio second part. Uh, and we'll see you then. Yeah, don't be a cock. Are you a fan of the old school NHL 94 game on the Genesis or SNES? Why not check out my show, the NHL 94 podcast, from tournaments and tactics to the people who make up this community. Check it out wherever you listen to podcasts or find it on YouTube. <laughs>